Hey what's up guys, Georgia here, back again with another Shadowverse video. As you guys know, the upcoming expansion, what's it called? <laughs> Fortune's Hand is coming pretty soon, um, like 10 more days until the expansion drops. And because Shadowverse on their English social media, they're not revealing, the, um, they're not posting the cards because of uh, reasons. I don't want to say the reasons because I feel like they should just say it themselves. Uh, but... Yeah, uh, so I'm going to be going over some of the cards that they released. They do, they are posting the cards on their website, so if you can't um, read Japanese because they have the Japanese cards on social media, you can just check out the Shopper's website and they'll have the English versions of the cards. Um, there might be some kind of like time lag, but they are pretty good at updating the site. Uh, so I want to do a review of the cards that have, are, have been released already. There's like... Uh, 10 cards that's been released already, so hopefully the video doesn't get too long. But yeah, I'll probably just try to go over the cards more quickly to try to cover everything in this one video. But yeah, let's get into it. It's kind of similar to my uh, last uh, review video, I'm just going to go over the card, um, talk about the effect a bit, and give it a rating from 1 to 5. So the first card we have is the cover card, which is X. What is this, 12? I guess it's 12. 12 Wolfred Hangman. Which is a legendary card for Forest, Enhanced 7. First of all, 3 play point 3 3, Enhanced 7. Or 3 play point 3 3, evolves to 5 5, Enhanced 7. Um, put a treacherous reversal into your hand and banish this follower. Uh, can't be destroyed by effects. Its regular effect is can't be destroyed by effects. Um, can be destroyed by damage from effects. And the evolve ability is if at least 3 cards were played this card, turn gain plus 3 plus 3, can't be destroyed by effects. So, first of all, just um, ignoring the Enhanced 7 first of all, the Evolve is a 3 play point 5 5 and if you play some cards before it, so maybe you could do some combos or something, play some free cards, um, I think you could get about a, I think on average like a 5 play point, um, depending how you set it up, but maybe like a 5 play point 8 8, uh, which can't be destroyed by effects. So that's pretty good. Um, I think. Some people were thinking this card is really good, but then when I think about it more, because you have to play 3 cards before it, um, it is really costing, I would say, on average 5 play points. Because you could get some free cards, like the natural cards, you could recover, like, uh, Fertile Aether, for example, or you could play some zero cost trees and stuff. So you could play this card for, like, cheaper than 6, because I think most of the time it would cost at least 6 uh, to get the effect off. But, so sometimes you could scam it, and you could get, like, 5 play points worth for an 8-8 for it. 8 8 that can't be destroyed by effects. I don't think that effect is relevant too much because there's not too many destruction effects. So I think at this point, your opponent could probably trade into it. If not, if they don't can't trade into it, then great, you hit them for 8. But um, yeah, I think this card in some some games might just win you on the spot when you make an 8 8. Uh, but I think a lot of the times your opponent could deal with it. So I'm not too, too impressed with it. Of course, this is the cover card, so maybe. Cover cards are always broken, but um, le now let's look into the Treachery's Reversal. So this card is banish all cards in play, banish all cards in your deck. I don't really want to read all of it, but yeah, put copies of your first 10 cards in your opponent, play this match into your deck in the order they were played, transform the Reaper to the Reaper of your bottom of your deck to a victory card. Um, and treat allied cards that's been destroyed this match as if they were banished, which is kind of a weird ability, I think. At the end of your turn, opponent's next turn, put copies of each card in your opponent's hand into your hand. So, I don't know how, I really don't know how to look at this card. Like, I don't know if it's broken or not. Um, it's gotta be, I feel like it's just broken because it's the cover card, but my first impression is not super in incredible with it. Now, the end of your opponent's turn, put copies of each card in your opponent's hand to your hand. Like, your opponent could play around it by, like, dumping out their good stuff. Um, they know exactly... Because they are going to be playing their turn first before they give you their hand. Uh, they could set up their board... I feel like it gives your opponent so much agency to manipulate what you're going to be able to do. Because they're going to give you their hand, so they know exactly what they could play around. And if they could keep track of what they played in the start of the game, they will know exactly what you're drawing. So in a very high competitive level, I don't think this card could do that much in the sense because you know 
you're going to be your opponent knows exactly what you could do and what your range is. Um, so the initial ability though, banish all cards in play, so you could remove the board. But then when you're playing this card, you have to banish your entire hand, so you can't do much on the. Obviously, you play this at the end of your turn, um, or when you have nothing else to do with your hand, I guess. Um, transform the Reaper into the victory card. Like that's a really cool effect because now you have um, a alternate win condition. You have the Exodia at the bottom of your deck, but you have to draw ten cards, so, and those ten cards are your opponent's cards. Um, so like, especially in the early game, I don't think your opponent's really playing cards that you could thin out your deck well, so you can't really accelerate your win condition. I feel like this card, it needs... There might be something else in the expansion that'll make this really good. Like, maybe you get a leader effect where you could draw more cards from your deck or something. Because if you're not being able... If you can't accelerate to your victory card, this card's kind of bad, I think. So, the Treacherous Reversal is kind of... I, I feel like... It could be broken depending on what kind of support it has with it, but uh, Roll for it itself could be pretty strong in some situations. I'm only going to give this card a 3.5 out of 5 right now uh, because I, it's really hard to see how good it is, but maybe, maybe it's going to be better. I don't know. It's the other legendary card for Forest Craft. A 6.44, 6.6 evolved um, the fusion fourth cross followers that originally cost two play points or more, so you can't fuse fairies into it, unfortunately. Um, whenever two or more cards are fused to this card at once, gain plus two and draw a card. So you pretty much want to always be fusing two at a time, so that way, if you're putting, if you're minusing two for your fusion, you're going to be drawing one, so it's just really a minus one for the fusion at least. Um, so the fanfare ability is if at least two cards are fused to this card, gain storm. Then if at least four cards are fused to this card, destroy an enemy follower. So it's a pretty solid like uh, mid, mid range fusion card. I'm surprised it's not a natural card because it kind of looks like it could be a natural card, but maybe that would be too broken with um, natural outcome menace. No evolve ability. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like this card, six play points to play it. It's kind of expensive. Um, it does possibly open a lot of burst damage because you could keep fusing cards into it and making it like really big, but yeah, so it could be like your end game card. That's what I see it as. Um, with the hangman you are drawing, no, it doesn't work because it, it won't be in your hand. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. This card, I still feel like this card's very meh. Like, the fusion ability isn't great. And you just gain possibly a big body for some burst. Yeah, it, it's really hard to evaluate forest cards right now just because we don't know what else is coming out with it. And with what we currently have in the current card pool, it doesn't really suit these decks. Or these cards. Um, so I'm just going to be giving... I'm going to give this card a 3 because I think it probably has potential. But I really don't see it play too playable at the moment um not having a natural trait i think is a really big big deal except we have the sword craft golden card prudent general uh four play point three four of all still five six no evo no regular effect it has evolve effect give your leader the following effect at the end of your turn summon a steel clad knight and the steel clad knight is a two two okay i mean at the end of your turn though, you get 2-2 two, 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 two at the end of your turn every turn. I mean, it's pretty, pretty good. Um, hmm. I mean, with like regular evolve swords, you're going to have a lot of evil points. So you could use an evil point on this. Um, commander though. I think it'd be better if it was an officer. I don't know, this card's like alright. Um, usually, generally leader effect cards are pretty good, but... Um, we don't, yeah, like, Sword right now has a lot of different variants, like, Aggro Sword, Evo Sword, um, again, this card's really hard to evaluate, I would say, 
I'll give it a 3.5 because it's got a decent, uh, it's got a decent le leader effect. Like a 2-2 every turn is pretty annoying. Um, but yeah, I don't know. If there's more support for like token sword, maybe this card would be played. I mean, if you're going to play it, you're going to play like two or three copies anyways. But yeah, not too much I can say about that. Next is a uh, Runecraft Legendary Zero Link called a Fool, uh, two play point two two walk to four four, fanfare, choose play, put a right of the ignorant, or scourge of the omniscient, om omniscient into your hand. Evolve ability recover two play points. Uh, so yeah, this card's obviously very really strong. Let's look at this. Uh, so right of ignorant, give your leader the following effect: at the start of your turn, draw a card. And spell boost it x times x equals a random number between one and ten. Then give it the following effect at the end of your turn: discard this card. Um, yeah, and the scourge of omniscient gives the enemy leader the following effect: at the end of your turn, reduce your leader's reduce your leader's defense by one. Um, so your opponent's going losing one house every turn, one max house every turn. Um, so yeah, obviously this card is super powerful because the evolve ability is, I feel like it's really unnecessary. Like, why did you make this card cost zero for, and then, like on turn four, you could either set up Rite of Ignorant or Scourge of the Omniscient. So you get two powerful leader abilities, either, like, it depends on your situation, of course, and also probably depends on what kind of deck you're building. If you're playing like a, I don't know, like, you could even play this in Natural Rune, honestly, because if you play this early enough, and probably not that good in that true. Uh, it could be good in natural rune. Like it kind of works with Carol if you use Scourge of Omniscient, because you keep you keep minusing your opponent's max defense, and then you eventually just kill them. <laughs> um, right of the Ignorant is also really strong. Um, it, there's some variance in that the um, one to ten, but it's just give your leader the following effects, draw an extra card. So I think. So every turn you draw two cards, just is already a good effect, I think. So yeah, I think this card's a five out of five. Like, it's going to be played three of in a lot of rune decks, I think, because there's a lot of um, flexibility. It could be played in like spell boost decks, or it could be played in um, kind of like aggressive burn decks. So yeah, I think this card's super good, five out of five. Next up, we have the Dragon Legendary three play point two three um, turn coat Dragon Summoner two three falls to four five. If this card is discarded by an effect, put Crimson Dragon Sorrow into your hand. Um, it has Ward, Fanfare, discard a card, put an Azure Dragon, Azure Dragon, Rage into your hand. Uh, Ward. I got excited for a second because Azure Dragon from Hearthstone. Um, but yeah, let's see. So, if it's discarded, this gets into your hand. Um, during your turn, whenever you discard a card, subtract X from this card. Cost x equals the number of cards discarded. Fanfare discard a card, draw two cards. Okay, so it's like support for. I mean, Discard Dragon already has some cool stuff. So, yeah, I mean, you're probably not gaining it down to zero. It's probably you could probably get it down to like two or three costs though, which is still pretty good. Um, the oh yeah, it has Ward too. Yeah, it's not bad. And then. If it's so, if you just play this card, you get Azure Dragon's Rage. During your turn, whenever you discard a card, subtract X from its cost. Again, X equals the number of cards discarded, and it's got Storm. I mean, yeah, this is like a very solid um, legendary card. I think. Um, obviously, you play it in a heavily, I would say, a much more heavily discard packaged dragon. So, uh, this expansion might also bring more discard cards. Um, so, I mean, the thing with dragon is that they're still going to have natural dragon, so it's going to be a bit hard um, to play anything other than that. But if the deck gets enough dragon discard stuff, maybe this deck could be good. I think this card overall is just really strong. You have a lot of flexibility because all the discard cards in dragon, you get to choose what you discard. So, um, you really do have player decisions where you want to discard this and get the Crimson Dragon Sorrow. Or do you want to play the Dragon Summoner and get their Dragon's Rage? Um, 
With that being said, I don't think the cards are like extremely powerful. It's just like a solid card overall. So I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5 because I think you're going to play this as a 3 of in your uh, discard dragon deck. And it's going to be a good card in your discard dragon deck. Um, but it's not like super broken as other legendaries I've seen like the runecraft card we just looked at. So from what I thought of early, before, um, I'm actually going to cut it here because I think doing 5 cards per video is just like a good number. Um, also, I end up still ended up talking quite a bit about the cards already. So I'm going to do another video um, the next day on the other 5 cards here. Um, they're going to be updated more still. So yeah, I, got to, I have to catch up. But yeah, I'm going to end it here for now. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more of these card reviews. And also comment down below what you think about the cards that I talked about in this video. Do you s and if you agree with my opinions or disagree. Um, and if you disagree, tell me why. Because um, of course, I really can't predict fully how good cards are going to be. And I'm really open about hearing about other people's uh, perspectives. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Yeah.